our Green Themes presentation. Right. And tonight, we will have a Green Themes presentation on the Sustainability and Climate Action Plan by the Roy Harvey, who is our Townships Recycling Coordinator. Delighted to have you back here with us once again. Thanks. I, uh, we have had some uh, uh, ongoing reports from uh, our representative on the energy team about the development of this climate action plan. And we're really looking forward to hearing about it in more detail. Thank you for having me. This is uh, the first time we've really uh, come public um, in a serious way to invite participation in this plan. And uh, we are looking forward to ideas that you have, um, not just in the plan, but um, how we might um, engage others in this, um, in fulfilling our, some of the goals that are outlined here. <clears throat> um, I wonder if, uh, let's see here. Is that? <laughs> no signal, okay. It's good to know that, uh, Thanks for catching me before I'm halfway through the presentation. I could press random buttons, but uh, <clears throat> anyone else familiar with how to? Okay. Hey. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, let's see if I got my uh, keys correct here. Well, as you are aware and have been involved, um, Meridian has done a lot to uh, keep, keep the township green, to expand and help residents appreciate the environment here. And uh, this, <clears throat> this plan is is kind of a way to build on some of the successes um, that have already occurred. And I appreciate your efforts to, to keep Meridian green and, uh, and channel development in positive ways as you're dealing with tonight. Um, this sustainability and climate action plan provides a framework or a green print, if you will, for continuing and expanding on this. And this is what we're, we're seeking your involvement on. It also sheds a light on something that traditionally is not as visible. We don't see how much energy we're using right now with the computer and the lights. Um, we have a couple of people in the township that see the energy bills every year. But it's uh, energy and climate change are largely invisible. So this plan gives an opportunity to um, give a little bit more recognition to some of the issues that uh, we face environmentally and economically and socially. <clears throat> we're also helping, um, we're also hoping that this plan will help sort of nurture a culture of energy efficiency and environmental stewardship that you are, are engaged in already. So as I, as I mentioned, uh, we have some uh, members of our team here and um, up at the, um, what do you call it, Diaz? Diaz? Um, and so I appreciate uh, their involvement in creating this, this draft. And uh, we're doing this for a, for a few different reasons. Energy, uh, uh, we spend a lot of ener money on energy in the township. We spend about $350,000 annually on street lighting. We spend about $300,000 on electricity and natural gas to power our pumps. Um, that pump water and sewage, and to power our buildings. The building we're in right here uses more energy than pretty much any other facility that we have in the township. And then we spend about $100,000 on fuel for our vehicles. Altogether, this generates about uh, 5,000 metric tons annually of CO2 to the, uh, to the atmosphere, which as we're beginning to understand affects our climate, locally and regionally and globally. Altogether, based on estimates 
from, um, I believe it's the Alliance to Save Energy, we spend about $5,000 per person, which equates to roughly $100 million um, every year on energy. And most of that leaves the township. Um, over 90% of that money leaves the township every year, creating a bit of a trade deficit. In 2007, the energy team um, was formed, um, also motivated by the um, desire to, to start to think about climate change. And I've reported on this to you in the past, so I'm going to just go briefly uh, through this. Um, but uh, Meridian became one of over 1,000 communities across the country and 30 in Michigan that signed on to the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement. And a lot of that um, uh, is due to the efforts of Judy Kindle here in, in our audience. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> and she remains active on our energy team. Um, a year or two later, we applied for a grant and um, were able to complete about $100,000 of energy efficiency improvements in the, um, in the township. Uh, <clears throat> That was what we were calling our phase one energy improvements, and that included some solar demonstration projects as well at Harris Nature Center. We've done a few things. This is just a, a real brief summary, but um, in 2012, we got a, a fairly large grant. We were one of the only townships to participate directly in the Mid-Michigan Program for Greater Sustainability, and we worked with Home TV to produce um, some videos that um, talked about environmental issues such as energy and climate change, also water and uh, wetlands and transportation, energy conservation, that type of thing. Appreciate the uh, home TV's involvement in that very much. In 2014, we, we were able to complete a uh, phase two energy assessments and we are still um, hoping to implement uh, those. 2015, we, we saw some improvements added to the fire station plans. We, we installed some LED lighting in parking lots, and we continued research on community solar um, and have since then reserved, uh, I believe it's uh, 10 panels in the, um, the system that's going to be going in j adjacent to the township in Bircham Park. 2016, we did some education with a sustainable home tour. We had a we held a virtual solar home tour here, sustainable home tour in this um, room right here, and um, we uh, we also recently signed on to the Michigan Green Communities Climate Work Group, and we are hoping to uh, get some further guidance in this plan through um, working with other communities around Michigan that have advanced further than we have in energy and climate change. A couple other projects, I'm not going to go into that. Um, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit our, our website. I will also respond to questions in a few minutes. Uh, can you see this? I, I can't see what you're seeing, but basically I wanted to, to mention that um, this was our phase one energy improvements. And they include things like lighting, high efficiency lighting, real fast payback types of things. And uh, most of these improvements have paid for themselves several times over since they were installed. Over the last six years, we've been measuring energy savings and we've saved about a quarter million dollars. Uh, that equals about one year's um, energy expenditures for our pumps and buildings. And uh, <clears throat> based on a conservative prediction of what we would save, um, we're putting 80% of that savings into a revolving energy fund to, to do more improvements. I think there's about $100,000 in that fund right now. I mentioned the, the Michigan Green Communities um, Climate Work Group. There, we were um, excited to see how many communities are doing similar types of projects that we can learn from. In fact, the plan draft that you have seen, I brought copies if you don't have it. I th was it in your packet, the draft plan? Was that? No. Okay, why don't I uh, 
provide sort of the latest draft. Uh, which is also available online. Thank you. But uh, we feel that local government has an, a responsibility to, to do something about this, as you can imagine. And uh, recently received this, uh, this list of all the communities in Michigan that, that have climate action plans. And it's, it's pretty impressive. Meridian is listed as a, as a community that's with a plan in development. So it's nice to be on that list. And I appreciate your willingness to learn about this. As well as anyone else who's tuning in, um, we're open to ideas not just from the commission, but um, from the public as well. Except for Peter. Peter? No, just kidding. <clears throat> there are also a number of colleges and military bases that have uh, developed climate action plans. Um, you've heard of most of these, so I'm not going to get in a whole lot of detail. And then we have large corporations like General Motors that's committed to 100% renewable energy by 2050. Um, you've all heard of General Motors, probably. Um, we also have a number of communities in Michigan that have developed climate, climate adaptation and resiliency plans. And part of that is because um, of the um, weather changes in weather that are predicted as a result of, of uh, <clears throat> uh, global warming, if you will. Um, we've been learning about this issue, and it's not just about temperatures rising. Um, and I'll, I'll get you a copy of the slideshow, too, so if you want to come back and refer to any of this. But um, based on um, current research, there's... Uh, the temperatures are rising. They're, they're rising f more in the wintertime, and this was new to me. There's also um, a longer freeze-free season predicted in the next um, decades. There's also an eight, about a 9% increase in annual pre precipitation, and this varies depending on where you are in the state. There are changes in seasonal precipitation. So we might see warmer springs and more precipitation um, in the spring versus in the summer months where we might actually have more drought conditions. Uh, so again, there's a lot of variation over the state, but in general, we're, we're potentially seeing a 25% increase in substantial precipitation events. Let's see if I can. So these, these communities that I mentioned earlier that are developing resiliency plans are, are, are doing, looking for ways to um, kind of mitigate risk. And a lot of them are based on the, are located on the coast of Michigan, but um, some are within the, um, or further inland as well. I'm not going to belabor the, uh, the climate change, although some people predict that this is one of the most serious environmental and um, health threats that we face as a as a planet, uh, but there's an, there's also enough reason to proceed or to pursue some of these recommendations, whether or not you are an, a um, a staunch climate change advocate or not, just by the sheer economic and other environmental benefits that we'd achieve through reducing our energy consumption. So getting to the, uh, the plan, uh, we've divided it into five categories, energy efficiency, renewable energy, recycling and waste reduction, transportation, and water management. And then uh, under each of these categories, we have several objectives. <clears throat> Again, this is a draft, so we're, we're open to changing any or all of this. Um, looking at energy efficiency, these are a couple of the objectives that we've listed. And under each of these objectives, we have strategies. And altogether, we have over 70 strategies that have been identified so far, and we're, we'll probably be expanding on that as, as you provide your, in, your input. I'm not going to list everything that's in the plan, 
but just uh, give a couple of different examples in each of the category. Um, these are, this is our list of phase two energy improvements that were identified in a technical energy assessment, and we're hoping to proceed with these fairly soon. Um, this will allow us to put more money into this revolving energy fund and also improve comfort levels and um, save even more energy. Uh, renewable energy is another section. Um, <clears throat> looking at developing policies and procedures that encourage the use of renewables, increase renewable energy use in the township facilities itself, um, et cetera. Monitor savings. This is the virtual home tour that I mentioned that was held in October in this room. And then there were some follow-up site visits to some of the systems and we found that partnering with the Greater Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association, uh, Joanne's been involved with that, and John um, has been a kind of a great opportunity to promote solar. Recycling and waste reduction offers other al um, alternatives. We'd like to increase residential recycling rates. We'd like to continue to expand our recycling events and then do further publication. Or, um, uh, public education about recycling. Uh, we're also talking with Granger about maybe um, expanding the, um, the the carts in residential neighborhoods. Carts are a, a good way to increase the participation and the quantity of recycling that, that goes on. Transportation, of course, is another piece of it. Uh, continuing to decrease the uh, the use of fuel in our township fleet um, we were the energy team became aware of um, some uh, support for electric charging stations and uh, we were able to put one of those over at the uh, um, the um, theaters and we're hoping to do more of that in the years to come we're still a member of the greater lansing uh, clean cities network and um, there's some money available for grants um, coming down the pike, no pun intended. Um, let's see here. There was recently a, um, <clears throat> a public session talking about the integration of electric vehicles, um, solar energy, and um, storage, et cetera. You know, when you've got a car sitting in your, in your driveway 95% of the time, or parking, there's no reason it can't be sort of integrated into your energy system. So we're starting to see more of that. And then water, understand that one of you is involved with water issues and hoping to get some additional ideas in that uh, department. Uh, not just in water conservation, but reducing stormwater runoff and um, getting better at monitoring water usage in the township and the savings from installing efficiency improvements. And looking at rain gardens and how we can, this is the um, eco roundabout that uh, some of you may have been involved in and uh, looking at ways to diversify our landscape, retain storm water and clean, purify water when it re recharges into the groundwater system. I like this slide because it, it illustrates um, most of our street lighting is uh, high pressure sodium, or I, I think we still have some metal halide, but um, of how much opportunity we still have given some of the existing technology that's available for improving efficiency. We're just beginning to sort of tip, um, tap the potential and uh, we feel like this plan will be a, a leap in that direction. But again, we don't want this to be just a plan that's on the shelf. We want people thinking about how the, what they can do when you go home tonight um, and what we can do, how we can integrate this into some of our other planning efforts um, and roll it out to the public or other commissions or boards um, in the area. So with that, um, one other exciting thing is this, uh, this peer review meeting on the 22nd. Um, 
other communities that have been involved with this planning have, have offered to give us some insights into uh, how we could improve this plan, and we'd be happy to share that with you. But we also look forward for you, hearing from you, um, not necessarily tonight, although if you do want to share some questions or ideas, we'll um, um, take those down. Um, but before we do that, um, is there anything, anyone on the committee that wants to add or subtract from something I've said? <laughs> John? We really appreciate uh, the fact that John is involved with your commission, and uh, I'm sure you do too. But um, that's been a real asset. Any questions from you? Or One thought um, that's used fairly routinely is when you looked at you looked essentially at CO2 emissions for the township, kind of as a whole, based on the township, the mm. governmental mm, and yeah. else, mm. right, elsewhere, is actually to look at. CO2 offsets. So what are your CO2, and balancing that CO2 offset with CO2 production. And using that essentially as a guide, gu another guiding dot, you know, parameter, whatever, for development. So you can look at uptake by trees, you can look up, you know, green space, and that becomes your uptake of CO2 and try and balance that with um, mm -hmm. CO2. Production. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, and I'm not sure how clearly we've identified that in the plan, but that's 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 the type of feedback we're looking for. Yeah. Um, the other thought, I one with recycling, and this bothers me. Um, I've got to do. I haven't done it yet, but as part of the textbook that I've written, I will. I look at solid waste recycling, and. Actually, in the last 20 years, we've gone backwards in the U.S. We actually reduce a significantly less percentage of what we use in terms of paper, in terms of glass, et cetera. It seems counterintuitive, but at least according to EPA statistics, that's what the data shows. What can we do in the township? I mean, one, we pay for, I mean, we have Granger, we pay for Recycling, it's essentially a negative, right? I pay to recycle. Hmm. What can we do the other way that instead of maybe, instead of do we subsidize it, do you pay for not, not essentially not recycling? Um, is there a way to kind of ba try and balance that to try and shift this trend? And maybe it's not just, I mean, it, not necess it's not local, the trends, it's nationwide, but to encourage more. Um, and then the last is, you, I mean, you mentioned the, the increased storm events. One of my biggest concerns, and maybe it's because I come from a civil engineering background, is the impact on traffic, the impact on stormwater quality, the impact on our wetlands. It's very hard to say that what doesn't seem like an issue now isn't going to be an issue in the future as the intensity of our rainfall events increases and we know they're increasing. Um, so what, how do we look at that in terms of policy and trying to look at adaptation, resilience, what do we do to change that? And even as far as the increased the increase in droughts over the summer how do we educate the population that they don't need to water their lawns and then deplete the Saginaw aquifer to have a green lawn when you know what I didn't water mine all summer long and when when the rains came in the September my grass was as green as my neighbors you know and so what can we do in terms of educating the public as far either mm. alternative planting or uh, changing the 
the perceptions, I guess, of what a lawn is supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. that's, that's quite a <laughs> Sorry. set of questions. Yeah. That's what they get. That's what they get. Those are great those, questions. If, if there's one that uh, you feel like, uh, like you'd like to respond to, uh, go ahead. Uh, but I don't, well, I just don't feel um, obligated yeah. to. I think you <laughs> take them all at once. I, I I love the questions and uh, they are good questions. Sometimes the questions are better than the answers. But also, that points to one of the key points we wanted to make, and that this is an organic document. It's not something to sit on the shelf. But we might address these at different times of the year as different. Uh, uh, maybe there's some grant opportunities, or maybe there's some planning opportunities, um, some ways that we could um, collaborate between departments and between uh, organizations like the Drain Commission, et cetera, to, to address things. In, um, ways that we can't necessarily predict today. But if we put the question out there, maybe someone else might have ideas, or maybe there's someone doing it that in a neighborhood where we can highlight that success story and help sh maybe shed some light on lawn watering alternatives, for example. That's one of my pet peeves as well. Um, where we can, it can also show someone the research that it's actually better to let your lawn go dormant rather than keep watering it. Anyway, I hate to answer. I don't want to answer the question. Yeah, yeah. You know, of all the things that you know are in my brain, and I'm sitting here thinking. And but, and there's other opportunities. I mean, we've tried to like with the Heslip Village Square development. We've. That's how I got on the board. Um, was the senior capstone in civil engineering looked at a comprehensive redevelopment and what could be done. So, you know, there's other things in terms of what can we do across kind of town gown, you know, mm -hmm. with MSU, how do we use the resources? How do we look at um, teach hydrology? What do we do? You know, you look at mm -hmm. water movement. What can we do together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good suggestions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Any other questions, comments for the presenter? I would just yeah. like to ask. Uh, I would just like to ask if uh, it, if a person wants to, you know, put up solar panels on their house, um, is there sort of quick access to the townships, or you know, are there any easy ways to figure out permitting procedures and so forth that are uh, uh, basically if we want to promote these sorts of things, what we don't want to do is find out that when we are contemplating sticking something on our roof, it's it's going to be bureaucratically. Those those kinds of barriers can mm -hmm. be uh, can stop people even when they're simple. Yeah, the so, planning department has been pretty so. supportive. Uh, I think Meridian is a little more progressive than some communities in that department. But Peter, do you want to add? I can speak to that. Sure. Uh, we've come across it several times recently, not as often as we probably hope we will, but the, what we require is a building permit um, and details on the loads to make sure that the roof would support whatever equipment's going up there and electrical to make sure that it's being connected in the, the appropriate way. But there are no, as far as I know, and I haven't heard any feedback from residents, major obstacles to getting a building permit to do something like that. That's, I just want to make sure that people don't sort of view that as, oh, well, if I'm thinking about it, I'm going to be entering, entering bureaucracy world. Uh, <laughs> okay. But um, making that uh, information accessible, and uh, it's my understanding that in some cases a building permit is not required, but I could be wrong. So I need to be educated about that as well. Um, so if people have questions about that, they should call you, or they should call Peter, or both of you? Uh, well, I think, I mean, Laura makes a good point. I think that we, the two of us, along with the chief building official, should uh, get together and, and talk about what's required and maybe put together a pretty basic um, memo or just a fact sheet for people to have. It's a very detailed set of instructions as to how to complete whatever the permit is. Yeah, now that you bring is. it up, there could be a, a perception that it is difficult and why, and why bother. Right. I'm so not saying it is, I'm just that. asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Dan. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you, and I uh, look forward to your comments as you digest some of these ideas and uh,
appreciate the opportunity. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks.